Hey guys, my name is Nastasia. I am a self-made voice actor. I work from home, I make money using my voice, and I was able to quit my day job and do this as my full-time career. So if you're sitting at home and you're thinking to yourself, gee, I wanna work from home, I wanna be a voice actor and make money just using my voice, but I don't know where to get started. I was never in theater, I don't know how to use recording software, I don't even know where to find voiceover jobs. Well, you're in luck because I was in your exact position just a few years ago, and I'm gonna give you four tips and tricks to get started and get your business rolling. So let's get going. Okay, so the first topic that we're gonna focus on is equipment. And this little baby can be your first microphone. This is an Audio-Technica AT2020. It's about $79 on Amazon right now. This is a great starter mic. Um, I wouldn't suggest going any cheaper than this because you want something that you're gonna have some room to grow in so you don't have to reinvest in your equipment so quickly. But this is a great basic mic. You wanna make sure that you're in a totally soundproof area because you don't have a lot of control in terms of directionality. You probably don't even know what that means. I still hardly know what that means. But this is a great microphone to get started. So Audio-Technica AT2020, I'll leave the links below in the description. The next thing that you're going to want to do is completely avoid using a USB mic. You don't want to use a mic that's going to plug straight into your computer. Um, it's just not really a good idea. You don't have a lot of control over the quality and a good idea would be to get an interface. This was the very first interface I ever started with. It's called an Alpha Lexicon. I think I got it for like $50 online at a time where I didn't even know what an interface was. I didn't even know how to use this thing. I just knew that I was supposed to have it. So basically you control your gain. You control how much gain your microphone is going to absorb from the sound in your little box. And it's going to filter through here and then go into your computer. So you can control a lot more than if you just used a USB. And then in the back, you can see that you can plug in your microphone. If you have some speakers, plug in your speakers. However all that works, it's gonna come with instructions. But this is a great thing to start with and it's only $50. The next thing you're gonna want is a microphone cable. And these are relatively cheap. You can find them at any music and arts store, guitar center, whatever it is. This is going to plug from your microphone into your interface. Then your interface plugs into your computer. And you're also going to want something to check the quality of your product. So I originally started with a cheap set of Beats by Dre. Um, they were all right. You don't want to get anything that's going to plug into your ears, you know, like the earplugs or anything like that. You want something that's going to give you a more surround sound type of feel so you can hear the details in the quality that you're producing. So whenever you send it to a client, you're confident in what you just delivered and you can hear everything that you're, they are hearing for sure. And finally, the last thing that you're going to be thinking about is soundproofing. And this is going to be your biggest hurdle. Soundproofing has driven me crazy from the time that I got started. There's a reason why you have audio engineers and people who go to school to understand this stuff because it's very complicated. But no need to fear. You can handle it. I'm just going to give you a couple tips. You probably will go on Amazon and look up the cheapest soundproofing foam that you can get and you're going to see these little things, you know, 12 by 12 squares for a 12 pack relatively cheap. It sounds affordable. Don't do it. Not a good idea. This is basically just serving as decoration on top of my little tables that I have set up in here. Uh, I thought I was going to be able to get away with this. I was not able to get away with this. Instead, I ended up going with this much more expensive foam that I got at Guitar Center. It's much larger, but it's only two pieces for $50, which is a pretty big investment. Um, if you're not even at that level yet, if you want to minimize your invest initial investment even more, then you're going to find a lot of people who talk about makeshift studios that you can do with blankets and foam bedding and things like that. That's exactly what I did. And I will tell you, I have gone through many studio setups and for an initial setup, probably the best one that I had was I looked up a professional traveling soundproof box that was about this big and it had professional foam on the inside. I used that box and then I put a cardboard box on top of it. So the booth box itself was meant for sound absorption and then the cardboard box 
served for sound proofing, which didn't allow the sound to leave the box and then bounce off the wall and come back in. I also had my studio set up inside a closet with all of the clothes in there and it worked perfectly. The quality was perfect. I was sweating my butt off in there and uh, it wasn't the most comfortable setting, but if you're just getting started, you know, you take what you can get and you do what you can do. And there's one more, so software. I still use Audacity. It's a free uh, recording software that you can get online and I haven't outgrown it. And at times where I thought I was about to outgrow it and need to invest in something that I pay for, I was able to just download plugins to use on the software. It's fairly easy to use, but for a voice actor, you're going to be needing very minimal um, usage of it. You know, it's really just your voice. You're not trying to regulate a bunch of music or anything like that. You're really just using one mono track and that's all you need. On to topic number two, and we're going to talk about must-haves. And the first must-have that you need is a demo. That's like your calling card. That is exactly what you show people. Just like you need a resume whenever you're applying for a job, you need a demo if you're gonna be a voice actor. And you can look all over online and people have very different opinions as to how to go about this. So I'm just gonna tell you what I did, which worked for me, and it was very little investment upfront. I made my own. As cringy as that sounds to many professional voice actors, I made my own. I worked very hard on it. You know, I uh, tried to balance the music and the sounds and all of that and tried to emulate um, professional demos that I had heard. I looked for scripts that I was interested in that I felt suited my voice well, but also that would show how dynamic my range could be. And uh, this worked well for me for the first several years. I actually went through two demos that I had made for myself and you have to bear in mind, I was not looking for an agent. I was not pitching myself to production companies. I wasn't trying to work above the quality that I could produce. I was looking for very small time businesses on freelancing websites just to get the hang of it, just to start building experience. I was charging very little for my voiceovers because I was just starting and I couldn't produce the quality that you would get from a professional voiceover. So that's something to keep in mind and it worked fine for me and I was able to start building my little snowball from that. Now, I have a professionally produced demo. I went to the best of the best in LA, Chuck Duran, and I have an amazing demo that landed me two agents within my first week. Everybody loves my new, de my new demo, and I'm pitching myself to production companies and things like that. So whenever you get started, you have to be conscious of the size that you're at. You're in a small pond, you're a small fish in a small pond, and you have to let yourself grow before you start trying to be competitive in the industry. Next, you're going to want a website. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It doesn't have to be the top quality that you might be envisioning in your head from other professionals. You really just need a link to send someone to for them to go hear your demo, see a little bit about you, maybe learn a little bit about your studio setup and book clients through. Uh, use it as, you know, a business card, if you will. A lot of people are wary about downloading files that you're sending to them these days, and they would much prefer a link where they can go and listen to your demos. And it's great because if you happen to update your demos and things like that, you don't have to send them around all over again. People will continue to just go to your website and they can see everything uh, in real time that's updated and new. Okay, topic number three is the big question of where do I find the work? And over the years from what I've gathered, voiceover is a changing industry and everybody's trying to keep up, which is great news for you to jump on board because everyone is sort of confused. But I'm gonna tell you what I've learned along the way, where I started and all of that stuff. Fiverr is a great resource. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's a freelancing uh, website online. You don't need to get approval to be on there. Um, there are some websites where they'll do a quality check and things like that, like Voice Bunny. You might not be approved by them to sell on their website. But Fiverr, you don't need anybody's approval. So that's a great place to start, great place to get experience, great place to understand how to work with clients. And you control your own rates. And it has served me very well. I know a lot of people that are professional in the industry, they scoff at Fiverr and they try to lump it in with the other pay to plays. Um, I think Fiverr is a great place to be and, uh, and if you know how to use it well, then you can, you know, I went full time just from being on Fiverr. Another thing that you can do is use the ACX audiobooks website. It's Amazon's platform. It's Amazon's platform for audiobook 
uh, narrators and authors to find audiobook narrators. This is where I landed my very first job ever. I was so excited. I made $700 on a terrible book. It was terribly written. I didn't do the greatest job. It was my first job ever, but it was a lot of fun and it really gave me the confidence that I needed to move forward. And it gave me a lot of experience because it was a massive book that I worked on and it gave me a sense of how much time you should be expecting to invest per hour of recording. So you're gonna learn a lot on that website. Some of the things that you wanna stay away from, I am not a fan of paid to play. Uh, you're gonna find that a lot of people are not fans of pay to play, except advertising agencies and the people who uh, use it to find talent. It is not great for the talent on that end. One, you have to pay a membership just to be on there, which is a very high cost, especially if you're just getting started. Two, you're limited to the amount of auditions that you can submit because the platform is trying to please the clients who are looking for talent and they don't want to overwhelm them with hundreds of auditions. So you're limited in the opportunities that you get. And three, you have a lot of bigger companies going to these play to plays, which means that you're attracting a lot of bigger voiceover talent and it's extremely competitive for less than industry standard rates. So if you're just getting started, chances are you're going to fall into the trap that I fell into where you pay money up front, you realize that you don't get to audition as much as you want, and the competition is just much larger than you are at the moment because you're just starting to learn. So I steer clear from that. I don't really believe in it. I prefer to go the routes of having agents and things like that, um, but to each his own. Okay, and the final topic that we're gonna focus on because I'm starting to ramble is number four, education. So you have your gear, you have your demo, you figured out where your fishing holes to get started from are. Now, how do you start to grow and build on that momentum? And you want to invest in your education. You want to look for acting classes. You want to look for a dialect coach. You want to learn how to grow business-wise because being a business person is just as important as being an artist, especially today. So here are some avenues that I went. One is you can look up Bill DeWeese. He's here on YouTube and he also has big training programs that he has put together over the years. I squeezed his YouTube channel for as much information as I could and then I invested in his training programs and it was a really great place to start. He has such a great attitude. He has a lot of good information and he really tells you step by step exactly how he goes about finding work and building up his business. A website that you can use for more information is called IWantToBeAVoiceActor.com. I use this website sometimes. There's a lot of information, but some of it can be a little outdated or you might not know how to apply it in real life. But if you ever have a question that's specific or something like that, it's just a wealth of information. Whenever I was looking for my first agents, I went there just to double check to see if he had any extra information and I was able to get some little tips and tricks from that as well. The final great resource that I have to suggest to you guys is is voiceover buzz weekly chuck duran is the host on there it's here on youtube and he brings in professionals from the industry to interview for an hour at a time and it gave me so much information when i was just going full time and it really gave me some confidence and comfort to know where i was starting from where i wanted my goals to be and what was expected of me in the industry Okay, so I'll cut it off there. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe, like, comment, ask me any questions that you have, and I will see you next time.